Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Jason Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Father God, we just lift up this time to you that you open up our hearts to receive your word. Your word is manna. It's bread of life. We can use it this week. It's practical, Lord. Your word is also seed planted deep in the good soil of our hearts and produces life changing in us, transforms us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our teacher. Teach us what we need to know. Prepare us for what's coming in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Welcome. It's so good to have you in God's house. Welcome to those who are watching on the stream as well. If you're ever in the Mesa area, please come hang out with us. We're a great family. We will love you exactly as you are. And don't forget about our daily Bible study. It's every single day, Monday through Friday. Me and my brother, Pastor Scott, we have a lot of fun. We do a morning scripture. We pray over your day. You just go to YouTube, type in daily Bible study, subscribe to the channel, and you get a new episode every single day. And uh, it's a lot of fun. How many do the daily Bible study with us? It's, yes, praise God. Look at them all over the place. So I encourage you with that. But today I want to I wanna talk to you about the healer. I want, I want you to know something that, Today, the healer is here. I said, today, the healer is here. He is. Two or more gathered, there I am. You brought him with you to church. And he's here today. One of Satan's favorite and worst attacks is imprisoning us in our health. Make us sick, give us pain. It's a disease, get a bad report from the doctor, and we can't get up, we don't have energy. It's tough to run our race when we're in pain. The CDC reports that 133 million Americans suffer from chronic disease. That's 40% of our population. And that another 20% are suffering from chronic pain. But Isaiah chapter 53, and verse 4 says, Surely he took up our pain. It's talking about Jesus. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. He he carried the pain for you. Our Jesus doesn't want you to have to live life in pain anymore. He doesn't want you to have to live life with a disease or a sickness, imprisoned, controlled by allergies or, or that diagnosis. He doesn't want you to have to be controlled by pills and treatments. That's not what Jesus' best is for us. He carried our pain. He already had it. He, You don't have to carry, you don't have to carry it, you can just give it to him, because he bore it. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, the Bible says that there were none feeble among them, 600,000 men plus women and children, none feeble among them, that shows you a picture of God's will for us as a community of believers. His will and desires that there'd be none feeble among us, all of us in the army of God, all of us equipped and ready and able to handle every circumstance that comes our way, that we might be able to march boldly into battle with full energy and strength, not imprisoned by any sickness at all. That's his will for our lives. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 kind of goes on to say, but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes, we, not we were healed, not we will be healed, not we could be healed. The decision for your healing was made 2,000 years ago when Jesus died. God already decided that you would be healed. He already made that. You're not asking God, God, will you heal me? No, no, the decision was already made. You are healed. And that are healed has right now implications in your life. We're healed might mean before, and will be healed might be some time in the future, but are healed has a right now implication, that whatever Jesus did 2,000 years ago, every single moment of your life, you are healed. It's for this moment. It might be that you were sick yesterday. You might have had it for 12 years. But right now, in this moment, if you'll reach out and receive the touch from the Savior, Jesus Christ, you are healed. You don't have to be sick one more day of your life. Arthritis can get out of this place. It has no bearing on your body to bring you pain anymore. It has to get out. Cancer has to get out of this place. Jesus stood over Peter's mother-in-law and rebuked Fever. He said, get out, fever. 
He is not okay. He spit in the eyes of a blind man once because he was saying, I'm insulting blindness. He wasn't it was insulting a man. He was insulting blindness. He's not okay with it. And I want to show you, I want, I want you to consider for just a moment the crucifixion as our Savior Jesus held on to a post, was probably tied to a post while they whipped him that was part of his crucifixion process. They scourged him, the Bible says. History bears this out too. And that our Jesus wasn't wimpy about his whipping. The Bible says that he was silent like a lamb to the slaughter. He didn't cry out for mercy. He didn't cry out for them to stop. He just stood there with his hands grasping, tied to that pole, however it was. Boom, here comes the whip. By his stripes, we are healed. He stood there. Cancer. Diabetes. Come on and give it to me. Give it to me. Arthritis. My people will not have to bear the sickness or pain. Boof. Here it comes, another uh, kidney failure. Boom, liver failure. Boom, heart disease. Boom, I am taking the stripes of sickness for my people that they will not have to bear it on their own. He took it. We think about the crucifixion. We think, well, yeah, Jesus took my sins. But now today I want you to consider that he already took your sickness, that pain, that thing that ails you. He already took it so that you wouldn't have to. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, you know Jesus of Nazareth. Do you know him? Can we say today that we know our Jesus? Can you say it from your heart? I know Jesus of Nazareth. How the Lord anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And if Jesus were here in this moment, which he is... What is on his checklist to do for you in your life? What are his things? He's written down a to-do list for when he gets around the people. And his to-do list is, I'm going to do good, and I'm going to go about doing good and healing. These are the two things on Jesus' mind, not just 2,000 years ago, because we saw it as he went about doing good and healing. But it's the same thing he's doing for us right now. Jesus The healer is here, and he's got one thing on his agenda, to do good and to heal you. Those who were oppressed by the devil, Jesus didn't bring sickness. He was healing those who were oppressed by the deceiver, Satan, who brings sickness to your body. It was never God's intention for you to have to bear any kind of sickness in your life at all. No intention that you would have to bear any kind of pain at all. But he takes it from you. See what Jesus is up to? Matthew chapter 8 and verse 2. One of my favorite teachings, healings in the book of Matthew. It's his very first one in the book of Matthew. And and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, Jesus, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus answers the question once and for all, for all of us. I am willing, be clean. Immediately the man's leprosy was healed. And I go to hospital rooms sometimes, and I hear the prayer, oh, if the Lord's willing, that he'll heal this body. And I get that. I love that. I actually, I'm not mad. I'm not condemning it. I'm I'm just saying they mean well. They want the will of God. But when it comes to healing, I want you to know once and for all that Jesus healed all who came. You see, the leper came to Jesus and got a healing. How many lepers that day didn't go to Jesus to get a healing? Our only requirement was that we come to him to recognize. And he answers the question, Lord, if you're willing, he answered it once and for all. Don't even ask God if he's willing because he is. Jesus already answered on behalf of all of mankind, I am willing, be clean. He's willing. He's willing and able today. And how did the leper come to Jesus? You have to come to him. But how did he come to him? Did he come to him clean or did he come to him unclean? In those days, a leper had to walk around saying unclean over and over again to drive off people who would be clean. They had to stand outside the city. They weren't allowed to mingle with normal people. 
but he pressed in to his Savior Jesus, and he came exactly as he was. He came in his filth and his uncleanliness and approached Jesus, and Jesus is wanting the same from you and I, exactly as we are. He is not waiting for your behavior to get right. Never once did he say to anyone, I'm sorry, I can't heal you right now. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4 that at sunset they brought all who were diseased from that area to Jesus and he healed them all. He'll heal everyone who comes to him. There is no qualifier. There is no cleanliness. There is no hoop to jump through. You simply come to him and he heals you. He never once said to somebody, I'm sorry, it's not God's timing for you. You have to stay sick for another couple years. He never once said to somebody, I'm sorry, but you've done this to yourself. You caused your own pain. God's going to leave you in your sickness because he's dealing with you. He never once said, I'm sorry, God's still teaching you something. Never once. Consider that for a moment. And let that be wiped from your heart for eternity. That God is not looking for you to jump through a hoop or to qualify for the healing. He just wants anybody who will come to him and be healed. Come on and give the Lord some praise right now. A woman writes to me, Pastor Jason, my name is Amanda. I'm not going to read her last name. I just wanted to write this letter to let you know how much the church, Living Word, Jesus has changed her life. I first came to Living Word when I entered a treatment facility. I had been struggling with substance abuse since 2005 in and out of hospitals and jail. I was starting to lose faith when one night after service I asked for Pastor to pray. And he did. Since then I have graduated treatment, got a job, have not even thought about using which is truly amazing. I have my family back in my life, and I wanted to say thank you. What's my point? She didn't get free of her addiction so she could go to Jesus. That's what people say. They say, well, I got to break my addiction, and then I'll go to the King of Kings. No, 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 no. You come to Jesus broken, and he'll break your addiction. You come to Jesus sinful, and he'll give you, he'll cleanse you, and he'll make you righteous. You come to Jesus depressed, and he gives you the oil of joy. You come to Jesus in ashes, and he gives you beauty. You come to Jesus in the pit, and he sets you free, rescues you, delivers you from the pit, and sets your feet on the rock. You come to Jesus exactly as you are, because he has exactly what you need. Anyone who comes to him, he heals all who come. And what's my part? Just to come to him. My son Logan, he's 12, and I said, Logan, go, go talk to your teacher about those missing assignments that you have. And uh, he, he said, just go talk to my teacher. I was like, yeah, just go talk to your teacher. So he got home from school that day. I said, did you talk to your teacher about those missing assignments? He goes, uh, no. Why not? Dad, I'm not going to just walk up to my teacher and talk about missing assignments. <laughs> Why? You don't just do that, Dad. I thought, here's a teacher. Here's what he doesn't know. Here's a teacher who's dedicated her life to helping kids learn and succeed. If you go up and talk to the teacher and say, hey, can you help me with these assignments? The teacher is going to be like, oh, my gosh, a kid who wants help. This is what I do. A kid who's trying. I love a kid who's trying. And the the teacher wants to get involved and help that kid be successful. She's dedicated her life to it. But there's a fear among the sixth grade class to just go walking up to the teacher. You don't just do that. I wonder how often we're the same way with the Lord. You don't just walk up to the King of Kings and ask for help. And yet there's Jesus who wants to help, who can't wait to find somebody who has a need and wants to try. Jesus is just waiting for you to boldly approach his throne, to come to him. He's here today. The healer is here, and he's just waiting for somebody to come to him. Lots of lepers didn't come to Jesus and get their healing that day. Lots of people will miss out on that glimpse from Jesus, but I wonder if there's somebody in this church today that has decided, I'm going to go to Jesus today. I'm going to come to him exactly as I am, and I'm going to receive my healing, because the healer is here right now. Jesus. Psalms 145 and verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him. All. Oh, today. Would today be the day that we as a church would cry upon our Jesus to call upon his name? Today, would we be the family that says, Jesus! Because there's people in this room that are hurting. 
because there's people that need him to draw near, that we need to come to him today because he's the chief physician. He's the only one with the answer that you need. He's the only one that by his power can drive sickness and pain out of your life in this moment, that by his stripes you are healed. I wonder if we could give glory to Jesus right now and just say, Jesus! Let's call upon him right now. Jesus! Now be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing and give him glory. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, cancer, get out. Go. In the name of Jesus, arthritis, go. Get out of this place. Heart problems, get out. That mass that you found, it's leaving, it's dissolving. In the name of Jesus, there's no more pain in your back. There's no more pain in your wrists. Someone's ankles are getting healed right now. Can you reach out and receive it? Cry out, Jesus! Jesus! Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on and receive it. If you have a healing that you need, receive it right now. His healing power is present. And how did the leper call on him? The Bible says that he came to him in worship. Behold, the leper came and worshiped him. Let us not miss this slight detail and how powerful it is. Because when we come to Jesus, we don't want to come to him in a panic. We want to come to him with praise and thanksgiving on our lips. We want to say, oh, Jesus, I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you, Jesus, that you are strong where I've been weak. My addiction is falling off. I thank you, Jesus. Let praise be on our lips as we approach our Jesus. So, a lady named Misty Burdett, and I was reading her story in Charisma News. She's from Woodward, Oklahoma. She was sitting at a church service one day, and the pastor was teaching on being thankful to the Lord. And, and, and it was tough on her, she admits, because she had had cancer for so long. She'd been diagnosed in 2007, and this article was written in January of this year. So this is recent. So many documented healings that you can find all throughout uh, the world of people who have had real miracles with God. Our God is still moving. He's still healing. And sometimes we think, oh, that stuff only happens in Africa or that stuff only happens elsewhere. It only happened 2,000 years ago. But I want you to know that it happens every single week here at Living Word Bible Church. We hear of an amazing miracle. Amazing things are happening. I have a whole stack of testimony cards here that I could read for you. Uh, Christy says that God healed her right shoulder of RC joint arthrosis, which is a non-inflammatory degeneration of a joint The pastor called it out during service. She raised her hand to receive it, and her hand, which you wouldn't normally raise, went up. For the first time in years, her shoulder was completely healed. It's a man that had severe back pain for 15 years. It was called out during a service. He had an x-ray that said two lower discs were rubbing bone on bone. Many times the pain was so excruciating I could barely even walk. The word of knowledge came forth. He said he stretched out his arms because he knew it was for him and said out loud, Lord, this is mine. He was immediately healed of 15 years of back pain and it hasn't come back. Come on, somebody say amen. Had a mammogram. The doctors told me I had cancer. But at, and that, and at church at 9-1-18, September 1st of 2018, at the 5 p.m. service, pastor spoke and proclaimed someone just found out they had cancer and they were being healed. On September 12th, she went back for a biopsy. While being imaged, the tumors, which were initially visible, suddenly all disappeared. The doctors could not believe their eyes. Someone said, someone must be praying for you. It's report after report. Here's Misty Burdett. In this service, she was told to be thankful, but it was tough because 2007, she was diagnosed with cancer, and she'd had uh, four surgeries, two mammectomies, uh, eight uh, bouts of chemotherapy. It went into remission, but in 2014, she had another report come back. In 2015, suddenly the cancer was back into the vengeance. Cancer in her lungs now, cancer in her pelvis, cancer in her bones. Stage four, been praying and praying and praying and praying. And then in October of 2018, after many, many years of praying, She went and had a scan, and the cancer was worse than ever. And here she is just a few weeks later sitting in a service where the pastor's telling her to be thankful to God. But she decided in that moment, I'm going to stop complaining about my cancer, and I'm going to start getting thankful. This is her quote, something inside me quickened. She says, I looked up, I had my hands raised, I looked up towards heaven, and I just said, thank you for my healing today. As soon as I spoke it, the Holy Spirit hit me. That day, my body changed. She began to tell everyone, I think I'm healed. I'm I'm healed. Something changed. She didn't have a scan for a couple weeks, but she went back for her PET scan, which was a normal routine. And where the readings once lit up like a Christmas tree, they now showed no signs 
of cancer. She's documented the whole thing. She's uploaded all of her medical records. Nobody can refute this. This is all documented healing. The doctor looked over the results again and again, even called in colleagues to confirm what he was seeing. The only thing the scan showed was a small scar on Misty's right lung. There was no cancer. Even her bones were healing. Somebody give the Lord some praise. <laughs> after years of praying, after years of asking, what did she do in one moment? She just got thankful. She got praise on her lips. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. Let's get thankful right now. Can we get thankful? Could praise erupt in the middle of a 915 service to the King of kings and Lord of lords that we might in this service offer up some thanksgiving? What, is, what has the Lord done in your life? Can you let the praise of your Jesus on your lips for a moment for the victory he's done? Can we let it out? Somebody say glory to God. Somebody else cry out praise to the king. Cry out with your own voice and give him glory for the healer is here. And now receive it. Do you feel the power? Now receive it. In the name of Jesus, every sickness must go from this place. Every disease must get out of the body now and pain be gone. In the name of Jesus, the mind is clearing up. Somebody's been dealing with early signs of Alzheimer's, but you're healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive it and give him glory. Come on and praise him. Thank him for it. It's done. You know, we, we got to, what, what I see in the Word so many times is, 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 is so, something so simple. It's just wanting it. We got to want it. There was a woman that was bleeding for 12 years in the Bible. And she tried every doctor. She spent all her money. And nothing was working. And she was discouraged and hopeless and disappointed. But Jesus came through town. Great crowd around him. And she saw Jesus and she thought to herself, if I can touch that man, I'll be healed. So she pressed through the crowd. She grabbed Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? The disciples are like, you're crazy, man. Everybody's around you. What are you talking about? Somebody touch you. Everybody's touching you. I touch you. No, no, no. Power had gone out for him. Say power. power. Oh, there's power in here this morning. Why? Because the healers heal here and he's full of power. And he releases his healing power that his word might have that ability to penetrate and push out the sickness in your life. That you might receive and conceive the word of God. That it might become real in your body. That invisible word made manifest in creation itself. It's the intention. It's the word becoming flesh. Where to go? Who, who, who touched me? Power went out somewhere. And they brought her. You know, she, she fell at his feet. I'm sorry, I'm the one who touched you. He wasn't mad at her. He commended her. I'm not mad. Are you kidding? I wish everybody would do this. He said, your faith has healed you. Now go and be whole. What is this? What is this power? Think about it for a moment. So many people were there that day that probably needed a healing. They were there just to get a glimpse that day of Jesus. I think sometimes in churches across America, people go to church in the morning, and I think that's a wonderful, commendable thing. I commend you. I honor you. Anybody who gets up on a Sunday on their day off and goes to church, my Lord, and then takes a shower to boot? Oh, my gosh. You're incredible. You're not binging Netflix. You're here at God's house. That's amazing. And that crowd turned out that day to get a glimpse of Jesus. I think that there's people all over America that have come to church today to get a glimpse of Jesus, to worship him a little bit, to hear a couple words that he says, oh, there's Jesus. I saw Jesus today. But there was one in the crowd that wasn't going to settle for just a glimpse of Jesus. There was one in that gathering that day that decided, I'm going to go get what Jesus has provided. And she pressed through the crowd, like it says in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Paul said, I press in to take hold of that 
for which Christ has taken hold of me. You know that Christ has taken hold of you, but now I want you to reach out and take hold of what Jesus brought you. Don't just be a bystander in the message of healing today, but I want everybody in here to not settle for the glimpse, to not compromise for a life filled with pain. You might be able to survive. She could have survived with this. She could have lived the rest of her life with this bleeding. It doesn't say she was dying from it. And so often I think that we compromise and say, well, I can live with this. I've got some treatment. I've got some pills. It's going to be okay. But today the healer is here. Don't settle for the glimpse. I wonder if there's just one person in this sanctuary today that says, I'm not going to settle for a glimpse. I'm fighting my way in to take hold of my healer because I'm getting my healing today. Today is the day I'm walking out healed that you might touch the Savior and receive it and be forever free of your sickness and your disease. Press in right now because the healer is here. Do you feel him? Do you feel it? Now receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, every sickness must go from this place. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Brand new heart. Someone's getting a brand new pair of lungs over here right now. That, that tobacco was, was eating away at your lungs, and then Jesus just healed you. He's given you brand new lungs in the name of Jesus. Whatever your sickness and your ailment is, Lord Jesus, addiction's falling off of this place. Food allergies are coming off of you. In the name of Jesus, air allergies are coming off of you. You're going to be, somebody here has been dealing with chronic fatigue, but tomorrow morning you're going to wake up with energy like you had when you were young. You're going to fly like an eagle in the name of Jesus. Just receive it and give him glory. Praise on your lips. I ain't just come to church to get a glimpse. I came to touch my Savior. You could be seated. And sometimes people say, well, where's the dignity? Man, I will become even more undignified than this. <laughs> well, Pastor, you know, you prayed and you spoke the healing word. And yeah, I felt the power, but I got home. Nothing changed. Everyone gets their healing but me. You get disappointed heard about that person getting healed and this person getting healed, but pastor, I've had this for a lot of years. It just hasn't happened for me. What about me? Where's my healing? Just keep hoping. Listen to me. Just keep praying. I've seen it happen instantly, but I've also seen my own daughter, Katie. She had, she was born with a breathing condition and, and for six years she was on breathing machines, just even from a little infant. Doctor said, well, she'll have this the rest of her life. She's got damaged lungs. You know, we never believed it. We stood, and even though we gave her the treatments, we stood, Pastor Mary, we stood, and we believed that our God could heal her. And we knew that he had healed her. And so we stood, and we kept believing and praying and hoping. And one day, when she was six years old, she came off those breathing machines. She's never been on since. She's got great lungs. She can run. My mom got hit with rheumatoid arthritis, and for a month she fought. They said, You're, it's an incurable rheumatoid arthritis. You'll be in a wheelchair your whole life. She couldn't walk. She couldn't move. It hit her so fast. But she wouldn't give in. She tried to get up every single day. She quoted the scripture. She prayed and believed God. She felt the power of God. She wouldn't give in. She kept hoping. She kept believing. She kept standing for healing. She never gave up. And now she's standing, walking, running. She's preaching the word of God in Europe today, doing a conference 30 years later. I want you to know she walked in the doctor's office, the one that had diagnosed her with rheumatoid arthritis. She walked in and stood before him, and he was amazed. How are you walking and standing? You have incurable, crippling arthritis, completely healed. But it took her a little while, it took her a month, don't give up. Ten lepers came to Jesus, and Jesus said, go and be healed. Kind of group prayed over them. Said, go and be healed. And off they go. It was some time later that they became clean. They were walking a great distance. One of them came running back to say thank you. What was happening? Go and be healed. You don't know when it's going to happen. You believe right now, and I believe right now that word of God is living and active. And you might think, well, nothing's changed yet, but, but I'm here to tell you, yes, something has changed. The carpenter 
the builder of the house has already begun to do the work in you and he will finish what he started. You don't know, you might walk out of here with the same pain, you get in the car, and all of a sudden you're driving down the road, you hit that stoplight, and the Spirit of God fills up the entire car. And Jesus sits next to you and touches you. Boom, you're healed, and that pain's gone forever. You don't know if it's going to happen Monday or Tuesday, but that Word is living and it is active. Don't be disappointed, but you walk out in hope. Abraham, listen to me, Abraham in hope, against all hope, believed God because he who promised is faithful. You just stay standing in hope. Don't compromise. In John chapter 4, there was a royal official that came to Jesus and said, Sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus goes, go. Your son will live. It's a powerful thing. It says the man took Jesus at his word and departed. I wonder if we can take Jesus at his word today. You know, the body's going to tell you one thing, but you don't have to believe the body. The test results from the doctor are going to tell you one thing, but you don't have to believe that either. Why don't we just learn to take Jesus at his word? And I want you to see that the man wasn't, didn't have his son there. Jesus didn't touch his son. The son wasn't even there. But Jesus spoke the word, and that word went and healed the son at a great distance. It took a day for the man walking back where they met him. It was a long, it was a long journey where his son was, but God knows no distance. And if you've got a child that's hurting, maybe they're in children's church today, and you're like, oh, I wish my child were here today. No, no, no. You're here. You can receive that healing today. Just take Jesus at his word. Your child's not going to deal with ADHD anymore. Your child is not going to deal with that food allergies anymore. Your child is not going to be sick anymore. Your child is going to be healed of every thing that's been ailing them. Why? Because the healer is here and you're receiving it. If you'll just take Jesus at his word today. There was a, a couple that was here last night. At the same time, their son was being rushed to the hospital with a heart condition. He, had, he, he actually used to work on ambulances. He knew what a heart attack felt like. He'd seen it. He had all the symptoms, so they took him to the hospital. They didn't know that mom and dad were here praying. And during the healing service, the parents received the healing on behalf of their son. I want you to know they tested his heart and found out that there was nothing wrong with his heart. They sent him home totally healthy. You could receive it. That was just last night. I can't even tell you how many healings I've already heard from this weekend services. You couldn't even count them. God is moving on behalf for you and your children, your grandchildren. Maybe your spouse is in the hospital today. I want you to know that today you can take Jesus at his word. He says this. He says, go, your spouse will live. Go, your child will be whole. Go, that sickness is departing. Oh, praise God. Now, there was a man in Matthew chapter 12 on the Sabbath it was... Jesus had decided to heal this man. He was, had a withered hand. And, you know, Jesus isn't right, waiting for the right day, a certain day to heal you because they, were, they didn't want Jesus to heal on the Sabbath, but he didn't care. He's not controlled by days or time or people. But he called this man with the withered hand forward. And he said, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched out his hand and instantly he was healed. I want you to see that the, the healing took place in the action. We come to Jesus. We come to him with praise on our lips. We come to him to take him and grab hold of him, our Savior, and get what we came for, get what he provided. We take hold of that word and we take Jesus at his word. Even if we don't feel it right away, we still take him at his word. We do it with the power. We're pulling on the power of God into our lives. Do you see it? And then there's an action. He'd say to the crippled man, get up, take your mat and walk. You know, if he didn't get up, he wouldn't have got his healing. If my mom hadn't tried to get up every single day, she wouldn't have gotten her healing. There has to be an action, a testing of that symptom. Is it working? I'm not saying stop taking your pills. I'm not saying don't go to your treatment anymore. I'm saying test the symptom. Is the pain still there? And right when you feel that pain, you say, no, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Pain, get out. Right when you feel that problem, you say, no, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, I am healed. You move that thing around again. There was a woman that I was praying for just in the back of the sanctuary with her feet, and her feet had been uh, a lot of pain. She wore special shoes, and she was walking like this, and she was a younger woman, she, you know, and so I said to her, after praying over her feet, she was kind of saying, you know, thank you. I said, no, no, let's walk it out now. Let's walk it out. So take a step. Ow, ow. How's it feeling? Feels the same. Still a lot of pain. Pain, go in the name of Jesus. What were we doing? We were walking out our faith. We were testing that symptom. We were stretching forth that hand. We were picking up our mat and walking. Go, ow, ow. By about the fourth step, she goes, well, that feels different. 
Well, that feels different. What was happening? Jesus was healing her feet. And she was stepping out into that place, stepping out into that faith and beginning to see it. And I wonder if today might be the day you've already been healed. You just, you've already been healed. You've al- I've already felt the power. You've already felt the power. The word has already been spoken. The healer has already been touched in your life. Oh, do you feel it again, Lord Jesus? And I wonder if you could go ahead and get up on your feet and bend that knee a little bit that's been ailing you because the knee's being healed. Or I wonder if you could get up on your feet right now and stretch something out and move something around. Test that symptom. Is the pain gone? Pain be gone in the name of Jesus. Is the pain gone? Check yourself. Move yourself. Stretch out your hand. Pick up your mat and walk. Receive your healing right now. Because in the name of Jesus, every sickness and disease is gone from this place. The children are healed. The spouses are healed in Jesus' name. Come on and give them some praise right now. Give them some glory. Check yourself. You better check yourself. Because you've been healed. Somebody said to me, well, I feel last night, it was about, about, my pains have gone about 20%. Look, he, what he started, he will finish. We just want to see a start. That symptom got a little bit better. Now, some of you got miraculously healed instantly today. Your doctor test hasn't showed it yet, but you received your healing. You're going to go get the test, and you're going to go, oh, yeah, 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 I got healed. Just know it. Take him at his word today. Father God, we just received this message now. That there be none feeble among us and our children in Jesus name. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, what a good time. Oh, it was amazing. What a great message. We're going to continue this conversation on our daily Bible study. And we would love for you to join us for that. Go to YouTube, type in daily Bible study, and you're going to find us. We come up first. We're the number one daily Bible study in the world on YouTube. We're going to do a morning scripture. We're going to pray over your day. We're going to talk more about this message. We want you to go there and subscribe to this. You're going to love it. You know that God wants you blessed so that you can be a blessing. It's not about the world's way where you accumulate the wealth and it's all about me, but instead it's about you being blessed so that on any occasion, as Corinthians talks about, that I can be a blessing. And that is what Think Like a Billionaire, Become a Billionaire is all about. It is about the favor of God working in your life so that you don't have to chase money. Remember the Bible says that God's blessings will run you down. So how do you create an environment that attracts God's best into your life? God says, I wish that my people would have prosperity. He delights in your prosperity. And prosperity isn't just money. It's every good thing. And so this book is all about getting all the good things that God has for your life. You can get this on Amazon and most bookstores all over the United States and in also in Korea. Nice. This book is in Korea. Anyway, we want to pray. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. Say this prayer after us. Believe it, you have it. It's not about following a list of rules, but the Bible says whosoever believes. If you're whosoever and you believe today, you can get saved and your eternity changed. Say this prayer after me. Dear Father, I ask you right now, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for all of my sins and was raised from the dead. I believe that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we'd just love to have you partner with us. You know, this life-changing word, it's changing the whole world. And you can join us on that mission of distributing this media all over the planet and making a difference. Go to wakeuptv.tv and uh, click the donate button. Join the team. Don't forget to find a great church. If you don't have one, get planted. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord, you're going to flourish. God wants you to flourish. And so we encourage you. I think one of the best things you can do for yourself and for your family is to be in church once a week, just like Jesus was. Remember that this is the day that the Lord hath made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. See you next Sunday.